Hi Floss Tube, it's Helen D. We are back in my very classy um, folding table craft space and today we're going to make strawberries. I tried to set the camera up so that you have the closest view and I might adjust as we go to see different things. So uh, these are Erica Michaels strawberries. She has, Linda Stoltz, the designer of Erica Michaels, has a tutorial on her website. It's a written tutorial. And that's basically the tutorial that I use, but I have tweaked just a couple things. So that's basically the one that I'm following. Um, I will link that below because sometimes you just need a written one to follow along with, not a video. But some people like a video, so here we go. So. This is an 18, that's why it's a little smaller. In this one I stitched on a 32 count, so a 16. So you can see the difference in size. They are a little smaller. Now, we'll go over a couple strawberry basics first. Uh, in the Erica Michaels charts, look here's the fall berry, that's what we'll be doing. In the charts she has a template right in here to use for the berry. You just have to make sure that this template is for whatever size she called for. So in this case, it would be a 28 count. And then she also usually has some different templates for little bits and bobs to put on the top. So what I did with the first berry I made, it happened to be the Naughty or Nice Berry. This chart came with this template, which has 40 count, 36, 32, 28. So I had all the different sizes. So I made a photocopy of this and I folded it on the fold line. So I got a full size berry template. And then I knew I was going to be making a lot of them. And to make it easier on myself to see, I cut out it's clear, so I don't know how well you can see it. I had some leftover vinyl, so I made myself a clear template so that then when I'm trying to line things up, it's a lot easier to see. Um, I happen to have vinyl. You could use um, like a page protector. This time of year, a lot of school supplies are out and they might have like a plastic folder that's clear or like a pale yellow. Um, so I cut out my 28, then I took my photocopy, cut it down to the 16 or the 32, cut out one of those, cut it down again and did my 18. So now I have templates. I know I'm not going to do anything on a 40 count, so I didn't worry about that one. I have a 28, a 16, and an 18. And I just stuck little labels on them so I would know these are also really helpful for when you're starting the berry to know how much fabric you need to cut. Um, I've been stitching mine on 32 count, which is the 16. So I know if I have a piece of fabric, I need to be able to leave myself a half inch border for sewing. I may want more than that to fit it in a Q-snap or to give myself some extra. So I can just lay this on my fabric and know that as long as I have a half inch, I'm good to go. Because it's hard to, I thought, it was hard to figure out my size of my fabric when the design doesn't go the full the full width and height. So this way I know I have a, half, I have a tight half an inch because I'm stingy like that with my fabric, but I know I have enough. So that was the first thing I did. And I'm keeping, I have a just an envelope, and when I make a template, I labeled it strawberry templates, and I'm throwing them in there so that as I go along, they're easy to get to. So this design is all stitched, and I ironed it. Um, the first thing that you do is put on some interfacing, and I kind of did some steps ahead so that I wouldn't have to get up and iron a bunch of times. So on her tutorial, Linda Stoltz has you cut your interfacing the size of the template because this is the size of the actual berry. But then I had a hard time lining that up to center my design. So instead, I just interfaced the whole thing because to me that was easier. Um, you can use, use what you have. 
I think she calls for the lightweight, which is the Pelin 44F. When I make project bags, I use a little bit thicker. It's a 9 Pelin 950F, and I always have a scrap left over. So I just save those scraps and use them for finishing. So I've used one that's a little bit thicker, and I kind of like the way it gives them a little more body. So this is the 950F. So I have my berry. I looked to see on the chart where the center was, like on the bottom in the point. And in this case, it's right at the edge of this leaf. So I know my center is going to be right at the edge of this leaf, so I'm going to flip it over. There's my leaf. And I'm just going to draw a line right on my interfacing to show me that that's the center. Now I can take my template, line up the point of my template with that line, and know that I'm centered. So first thing we're going to do is mark out where we want the design. Um, this design, I left a little more open space at the bottom. This one, I kind of went right to the point. So it's, it's really personal preference on what you want. Also meaning you can't mess it up, right? It is what it is. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I would suggest for people who might be nervous about cutting their stitching, try this with a piece of cotton fabric and make it something that has a specific design on it so that you can practice centering. Um, and then get your feet wet with that and then you might be ready to go. So I just kind of lined it up a little bit. I'm going to leave and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trace this right on there. So these lines are actually going to be, end up being our sewing lines. Okay, so I traced it on. I'm done with that. So now that's my actual piece. Now I need to figure out my margins, my um, seam allowance. So she has you leave a half inch on all the sides. Um, I have a quilting ruler that has, you know, your inches and stuff, so it's kind of easy to just line it up at a half inch as best you can because it's kind of crooked. It's kind of a little curved. And then for the top, I eyeball it. I just kind of sketch about a half inch above. And I'm going to kind of run off the fabric again because I'm stingy. Um, that's okay. So now we have the inside line and then an outside line. So now is the scary part where we cut. We cut along the outside line. All right. So we're ready to sew. If you're not a fan of sewing machines, you, you only have to do one line on a sewing machine on this. It couldn't be easier. So when we're getting our sewing machine ready and getting this ready to sew, we want to sew down these, these lines. So you fold it in half with the design on the inside. And I use a couple pins and I kind of poke through one line on one side and then make sure I line it up to the other line on the other side. And once you get the first one in, they usually just follow. Um, that way you'll know that your two sides, you're going to hit the line on both sides. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. So I'm lined up. My sewing machine you probably won't be able to see. I am just going to sew a straight line 
right down this line, all the way to the bottom. And sometimes this makes the camera jiggle. So I'm putting the needle right on that line. I did go um, like the little back and forth on the edges just to give it a little more stability. You're done with your sewing machine. So we have our line sewn. Now we're going to cut off this extra fabric and you cut it fairly close down here on the bottom to give your you want as little extra fabric in your point as possible. So I'm going to cut it fairly close down there and then it can be, it doesn't have to be right up to the edge on the rest of it. So I went pretty close to the bottom and I might even shave a little more off that um, and then kind of just up along. Now you kind of open this up a little and if you left yourself enough fabric, sometimes I don't, um, iron this open. So now we're going to switch berries because again I'm trying to make myself have to get up as little as possible. So here's another one that's I'm at the same point. I trimmed it up tight, I ironed it open as much as I could and now I'm ready to turn it. Um, when I'm turning I tucked all my tools, there they are. I'm like I tucked everything out of the way. So you're going to turn this and try and get this point as pointy as possible. So I use a combination of my finger. Uh, I have a point turner, which is a quilting tool that I might try and just poke that end out. If you had a chopstick or um, like a shish kebab, that would work. I like to use this, it's a bodkin. It's for pulling elastic through things because it has a ball point and I'm less likely to over poke and get something where I don't want it. And I can use the other end too. So I'm just trying to get that tip to kind of pop out as much as possible. And I think that's about as good as I'm going to get. Okay, so Linda Stoltz has a tip on her website for getting the tips of your strawberries to stay as firm as possible when you stuff them. Uh, and it's yarn. I use yarn in my corners when I sew pillows um, for the same reasons. I think it, once you stuff it with polyfill or something after, the yarn kind of stays firm in the bottom and doesn't, you can polyfill and pull it in that corner as much as you want and then it's gonna drift. Over time it's gonna drift. So she says to take some yarn and cut like little, little bits, you know, five or six little two to three inch pieces. Um, if you have normal yarn, they're good to go. My yarn happens to be really thick, so I have to just separate them in order to get it to be the same thickness as like a normal four ply. The yarn I happen to have is just fuzzy but I'm using it up. So, so you have all these little yarn bits and you just kind of stuff them right down in. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little now. Now that the cutting is over, you kind of tuck these down in pretty good.
and they will fill up that bottom. I'm kind of poking around the edge to get them like good and in there. And you can see that that's, that's going to hold that bottom nice and pointy. Okay, now I just stuffed mine with polyfill. Yeah. Oh, and if you didn't want to do this with the yarn and you had emery or you wanted to use crushed walnut shells, um, that would work too, right? Whatever, whatever you want to stuff with. So I have the yarn in, and now I'm going to grab some polyfill. Um, I use the Mountain Mist polyfill. It's just it's what Vonna recommended when I first started finishing, and it's the one I use. So I'm going to fluff a bunch up. You'd be surprised how much polyfill you can fit in here. Oop, we forgot one step before we stuff. I forgot this the last time I made one too. All right, so we've got some polyfill. Before we stuff, we need to load up a needle and make a running stitch around this line that we did, and that's how we'll close up the top. Um, I'm going to use sulky thread because I that's what I have. If you have a heavy duty like button and coat thread, you could use that. Um, you could use sewing thread. I would I would double it to try and because you're gonna have to kind of pull on this. So you want something a little stronger. I made myself kind of a long piece because I'll use this same thread to attach the cap. I should have mentioned strawberries are kind of a two-part process. You make the berry and then you make the cap separately, and then you sew the cap fully made onto the berry. So I'm using a doll needle, one of the long needles, and I'm gonna start at the back seam, and I'm just gonna go like a zigzag running stitch. All the way around. I'm probably leaving a quarter inch The top is the only part where you do actually use that half inch seam that you left yourself. The rest of it gets cut off. So we go all the way around here and then we don't do anything with this part yet. You just kind of leave your thread dangling, hold it back in one hand so it's out of your way, um, and then we'll get to that when we get to the top of the berry. almost. Uh, and it is helpful if you end your thread here so that it is on the outside. So I'll pull that off. It's on the outside. Okay. Now we're ready to stuff the berry. So I'm going to I'm just going to hold this thread with my thumb so it's out of the way because I'm going to be poking a lot of fiber fill in here. So you fill this up until you kind of get to the top. And I kind of fluffed mine as I made my pile, so sorry I'm shaking the counter. When I poke it in, I'm kind of going around the edge to really get it down in there. Okay, this will probably be good. Okay, so you get this so it's kind of up to that top line. Then, put your needle back on. Now I'm going to put a smaller needle on this time because it's easier to make a knot with. 
Okay. We're going to pull this closed, but not all the way closed. So you pull it closed like, so there's like an inch left. And it looks kind of wimpy, but we'll fluff that up. So I pull that closed. I just kind of will then pinch the side, take a little stitch, and make a knot. And I might do that twice. And then I'm going to leave this long thread, again, just kind of hanging out, and we'll get to it later. Okay? So now you've got this kind of not very full looking wimpy berry. Um, so you use your fingers to kind of shove that fiber fill down in there and then you take this extra half inch and just kind of tuck it right along that line, that thread line. You're kind of finger pressing it down in and then we'll keep stuffing and we'll get the top and you can put as much in there as you want. You have to be kind of careful that you don't pop your thread out. Ask me how I know. So now we just use our fingers and kind of really keep stuffing. This particular berry, this is one of the Bristol berries. This design happened to go all the way to the top of the berry. Most of them don't, um, but that was the design of this one. So again, I'm kind of filling up these edges and trying to smooth this out. And you can stuff them as thick or as, you know, if you're using lizard litter or crust walnut shells, they obviously wouldn't be as plump because um, that stuff kind of is a little more floppy. All right, so I'm almost. And then we don't actually close it up. It stays with this kind of hole on the top. Um, but once you put your cap on, you don't see it. And I think the reason behind that is that way this part will be smoother because you were able to kind of not pinch it at the top. So, all right, I think that's about all I can get in there. So, my berry is stuffed. So there's my berry. It's, it's pretty firm. Um, this stuff might pop out the top. Not a worry. Here's my long thread, just hanging out for later. So I'm going to set this aside. And now we're going to talk toppers. Clean up my fiber fill mess. So the topper of the berry is made with wool felt. Um, you can do any kind of design you want. Like I said, she has some templates. So I did this one first, and this one is using the template that was called to be used with the 16 count or the 32 count. I wanted mine a little bigger, well, personal preference. So when I made a template this time, I just kind of traced a little, a little bigger. I think I took a three inch circle and kind of extended it to that amount. Um, this one also, I took a three inch circle, I folded it four times, and then I just cut out, you know, I snipped to the edges and made this point so that it's even. So let's talk felt. Pull up my side stash here. All right. This is the felt that you would get at the craft store. Um, it's not 100% wool. It's polyester. It's not quite as thick. If this is all you can find, it's not, it's not like it's bad, right? <laughs> it is what it is. But it doesn't necessarily, you're not going to find this with like designs on it. Um, it's going to be a pretty solid color. This piece is from Weeks Dye Works, and you can tell it's a lot 
like it folds nicely nicer than this one does so this is a little higher quality uh, it's a little pricey I think this piece was six or seven dollars but I'm gonna get a lot of berries out of this piece because you really don't use that much and then these pieces I got from a store that does their own um, I happen to get mine from attic heirlooms they were in Maine when she closed her brick and mortar shop she still runs an online shop she ha I made it up there when she was doing her going out of business sale and she had a bunch of grab bags so I bought them so I have a bunch of different colors you can see this one is is two-toned this one has you know like the plaid um, and you might also find some wool in like the thrift store right you might find an old wool wool skirt or jacket um, this is another week style works that has the like the checkered herring bone I don't know what they call it but it has the checkered look so when you're making your cap you you put your cap all together here's one I made last night so it's all together and then we sew this on um, I used the template and I made my own template off of a file folder so that's a little stiffer and then I used wax paper so wax paper has the regular side and then it has like the waxy side uh, this is freezer paper I'm sorry not wax paper that would be a hot mess freezer paper um, you put the waxy side down and iron on the non waxy side and it kind of just sticks on there and then you can trace I traced my template on then I can cut right around it and it stays on there really nice so you get a really nice clean cut and then it just peels right off um, and the wax doesn't get on there so you just chuck that aside so this one I made some leaves and I stitched them on I have a circle and I stitched on a button um, this one I did a little crinkle circle with a couple buttons this one has some leaves and some buttons and a Jabco pin like you can do you can do whatever you want for the tops the tops I'm still learning to be creative so I have this piece ready and then I cut out just two I ironed on two little pieces of the freezer paper and what I thought I would do for this one to make it a little different I have a circle template that I bought just right on Amazon it's by I will look it up and link it below because it doesn't say um, I've had this a long time and get a lot of use out of it I thought I would do two different circles to put on top I think I'm gonna do one this size and then probably one so this size and this size so I want my light color on top so that will be the smallest circle and I'm just gonna draw right on there this will be easier to cut if I'm not dealing with that um, the top one on the light fabric I'm just gonna go right around with my regular scissors and then I think I'll use the pinking shears on the middle one and I'm just playing around I don't know what I'm doing with these tops um, on her website the Erica Michaels website if you go to her designs section she will list like she has a section called berries and if you click through that for inspiration um, every time she posts a berry she has different pictures you can click on to make them come up bigger she always posts a picture of the top so you can look there and try and you know do that same or you could try to I missed on that side <laughs> um, you know you could try to recreate or you could try to just use that as inspiration 
for your own. My circle is not quite, I didn't quite make it over there. So now I gotta just maneuver. It'll be good enough. So I have my two circles. So I'm thinking this and this, and then this little one on top. And then I could put a button. But what I thought I would use instead, I had these little felt balls that I had bought for another project. And one of them is kind of the same coloring. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a ball on top. And I'm gonna stick this in after with a pin. So that will go back in the bag. So to stitch these on with the leaves, I kind of just, I layered it up. So I put this tan piece on just with an X. Then I kind of went right up the leaf so it would look like, like the vein of the leaf. Did the same thing with this one and then just sewed the button on. So for these, And again, I'm going to use my sulky thread because it's a little thicker and I just enjoy using it. Um, because I'm not putting leaves or anything like that on and I won't really have a button to like cover my stitches, I'm just going to be a little more careful. <laughs> but I'm really just going to tack them down. You could go all the, all the way around them like with a blanket stitch or it is completely up to you. Like this one... You know, Misty made me this pin cushion and it has the stitch. You could do a stitch all the way around. Um, I can't because I'm not good at stitches like that. But if you were. So I'm just eyeballing this to center it. And again, I'm just going to come up. This one's on the bottom and it will be covered. So I'm not as worried about it. I'm just kind of going to put a big X in there and sew it down. Okay. Then I'm going to put the next piece on and again just kind of layer it up so I like the look. This one I'm going to be a little more concerned about my X being roughly in the middle and smaller um, so that that little ball will cover it. And that will be this topper. So now we're ready to sew them on, which to me was the most intimidating part, but it's really not that bad. I'm going to tie this off, and we're done. So there's my topper, here's my berry, here's my long thread. I'm going to put the long needle back on. I'm going to eat some fiber fill and put the long needle back on. So. I'm going to try and get this topper where I want it to be. Um, if you had leaves, right, like you might care what side they were coming off of. In my case, it's the same, so it doesn't really matter. I just kind of want it even. And I'm going to use my pins and just, just stick a couple pins in there to get it so it stays put where I want it. So how do I get that on there? I like to start wherever wherever we ended up in the back okay so I'm going to come up basically what we're doing is we're tacking down in between the little scallops, scallops scallops the little bumps so I'm going to come up and take just a little bite out of one of my scallops, like an eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna pull my thread up there. Then I'm going to go down 
and go into my berry kind of right under it and I'm going to push that needle all the way through to the other side until I end up just a little bit under and sometimes it takes some maneuvering my scallop on the other side so I'm coming out just a little bit and then I'm going to pull that through and that kind of tacks that side down and gets me over on the other side so now I can do the same thing I'm going to come up take a little bite of my topper and left or right it doesn't matter I'm going to start going like clockwise around come up just a little bit under it pull it through take another little bite go to whatever's across it I end up going clockwise um, take a little bite now I'm gonna pull these pins out because they're kind of in my way and I'm using a floss that matches the top color so that you don't really see it so same thing take a little bite figure out which one's across or what's left come up through I hope you guys can see this pull through go across take a little bite and I just do that until I'm all the way through that's why I made my string so long so I knew I'd have enough I think I have two more left so go through take a little bite and then my last one should bring me fairly close to the back like kind of where we started which it is it's not entirely the back back but it's fine get in there it's always one there it goes okay so when I go through with this last one I'm gonna switch back to my smaller needle because I can't tie a knot with that giant needle Load this up so now I still have to tack this this last bit down so I'm going to take a little bite but come right back out the hole that I was just in pull it down okay then I'm going to take and go kind of just take a little bite right in my fabric and tie it off tie a knot go through the loop tie a knot I don't want to cut this here because you'd see it so I'm gonna poke back in and just kind of pull it anywhere out the top pull it through and now if I kind of pull it and cut it the bit is inside and not in the outside so there's our topper it's on there um, like I said these are kind of floppy you could stitch them down a little more if you wanted but what I was planning on doing and I didn't bring a I didn't bring a flat pin so we'll use one of these bumpy pins um, here they are I will take a flathead pin but for now I'm just gonna take this and pop that in there and then my other plan was I have some of these just another button co buttons 
these are great. And I had, um, like I have a pumpkin. I was going to use the acorn. When I finish the squirrel, I'm going to use the acorn on the squirrel. So I thought I could just stick a couple of these in there. And I'm done. So that is how I make a berry. Um, I will put links below for Erica Michaels tutorial. She also has a page like with some templates on it on her website. I'll link that. Um, I'll link attic heirlooms in case anyone is interested in their felts. You can look on Etsy, like you can find felts. You might have a store that if they do wool applique, they would have felts. And sometimes they're great because they have like scrap bags or um, options of you for getting smaller cuts because that way you have more colors to play with when you're stitching things up. So I hope that was helpful and you guys stitch all the berries uh, and I can't wait to see them. Thank you so much.